Back in the late 1800s and early 1900s, some dinosaurs were taken out of the earth and have now become so famous that they've become a permanent fixture in pop culture. You know the ones, like the mighty Tyrannosaurus Rex, whose face you can find on everything from kids' toys to birthday cards, video games, and blockbuster movies. Yeah, he's pretty much the Kanye West of dinosaurs. But one guy you're missing out on is the Carnotaurus, the mighty meat-eating bull. The name kinda gives you the chills, doesn't it? Well, the looks are even scarier. Except for the teeny tiny arms, of course. Those really make you want to baby it. But apart from that, mean predator. Discovered in 1984, Conotaurus belongs to the Abelisaridae family, specifically the Conotorini tribe. It's got a pretty distinctive look. A short, deep skull, small arms, and long legs. Even though there's only one well-preserved Conotaurus skeleton, it still stands out as one of the best understood Southern Hemisphere theropods. Living during the late Cretaceous in Argentina, Conotaurus witnessed the aftermath of South America's separation from Africa. This isolation triggered independent evolutionary adaptations, much like the distinct wildlife of modern-day Australia. And based on that one solitary well-preserved fossil, it stood at about 10 feet tall and measured 25 to 35 feet in length. Not quite the giant like Disney's dinosaur T-Rex, but still a hell of a predator. Soft tissue preservation revealed a creature with a sleek, thin build. A far cry from the bulky T-Rex. Its overall body design was a bizarre mix. A flat, almost bulldog-like skull, extremely long legs, a rigid muscular tail, and tiny, almost comical vestigial arms. But all other features aside, I want to start with the rather strange skull, shorter and deeper compared to other carnivorous dinosaurs. The question is, why did it have such a distinct skull shape? Well, that's because its jaws and snout were short, unlike other theropods, making its bite weaker, but incredibly quick and chopping. This quick biting action was essential for capturing small prey efficiently, similar to modern crocodiles. The skull and lower jaw of Conotaurus were highly flexible, allowing different parts of the skull to move when biting to reduce stress on the bones. This flexibility is common in modern snakes and animals that swallow prey whole, hinting that Carnotaurus might have swallowed its prey in large chunks, perhaps supported by evidence of a throat pouch, similar to a pelican. Zooming out of the skull, Carnotaurus had forward-facing eyes, enabling binocular vision for depth perception, a trait seen in many predatory animals. Its very long legs, which made up about two-thirds of its body, along with its muscular tail, were adapted for sprinting and chasing prey, which are again traits shared with other pursuit predators, like sub-adult Tyrannosaurus. But Carnotaurus does have some distinctive features that really stand out, especially the pair of thick, conical horns above its eyes. These horns are like nothing you'd find on other meat-eating dinosaurs, and they seem to suggest some pretty complex behaviors maybe combat, or showing off. Keep in mind the horns on Carnotaurus are positioned on top of its skull. They are flat on the top, and it's not clear if these horns are sexually dimorphic or if they only appear when the dinosaur is sexually mature. But there are several hypotheses surrounding the purpose of these horns, and one thing's for sure, they weren't used for high-force bashing or ramming between rivals. That's because the structure of Carnotaurus's neck vertebrae and skull couldn't withstand such pressure, making it unlikely for these horns to be used for dominance battles, like bighorn sheep. Similarly, the horns probably weren't employed for stabbing or piercing prey. Their small size and top-of-the-head placement would make it impractical for hunting during a chase. Plus, no other predator in history has used horns in such a manner. But hey, sure made the Conotaurus look pretty scary though. I mean, come on, you don't want to mess with a big guy that's got horns sticking out of its head. But there's a catch. Despite its tough look, its forelimbs were actually pretty small, with little leftover fingers. This is a common trait among Abelosaurids, pointing to an evolutionary change. Now I've got to say, this bad boy had some serious speed on its side, thanks to its remarkable hind limbs. Its legs were long and muscular, with a solid femur and stretched out tibia, the kind of legs you'd expect on a predator that needed to move fast. And with its relatively lightweight body, Carnotaurus could take swift and forceful strides, covering ground in no time. 
Now, let's talk about that tail. It wasn't just there for show. It played a crucial role in balancing the dinosaur during rapid sprints. The tail had these bony projections, chevrons, and interlocking vertebrae that made it stiff. This stiffness was like a built-in stabilizer, reducing unnecessary side-to-side -side movements and making forward motion more efficient. But here's the thing, Carnotaurus wasn't just quick. It was the speed champion among large theropods. In fact, studies and fancy biomechanical modeling suggest it could hit speeds ranging from 48 to 56 kilometers per hour. And that's faster than any other big predator of its time, making Carnotaurus the Usain Bolt of the dinosaur world. However, a study of Carnotaurus's skull suggested it could deliver downward thrusting motions against prey. So, the skull might have been used like a club or hatchet, rapidly dropping down while open to penetrate with momentum, aided by the long neck and quick jaw movements. This implies a strategy of swift strikes to take down prey, especially smaller ones. This dino pretty much resembled a cheetah in its pursuit predator strategy. It would sprint after smaller prey, use its head for swift biting or grabbing, and then grip the prey in its backward-facing teeth before swallowing it whole. Now, the one and only Carnotaurus specimen that was unearthed came with a bonus, well-preserved skin impressions. The dinosaur skin was decked out in tiny scales that didn't overlap much, and there were these bigger bumps or osteoderms scattered along its sides. These skin details tell us a lot about how the dinosaur's skin felt and what it might have been used for, like maybe keeping its body temperature just right or offering some protection. Oh, and there's a lot of hype around feather dinosaurs, but Carnotaurus wasn't really part of that trend. It stuck to the classic theropod look and didn't have any feathers. Carnotaurus females are a little superficial. They might have chosen mates based on appearance rather than combat, pretty boys over tough boys. Since dinosaurs likely saw in color, the horns could have been covered in a range of colors to attract the opposite sex. The strange, front-facing angle of Conotaurus does suggest a unique mating ritual. This might involve females observing males from the front to evaluate them in color and size, similar to the behavior seen in modern birds. While this little bit might seem unusual, dinosaurs in general exhibited unique mating behaviors. It's possible that both display and combat purposes were served by these horns, or there might be an entirely different function yet to be understood. Another interesting possibility is that the horns could have been used to root up soil or strip bark from trees, similar to how male blue wildebeests remove bark to impress females and mark territory. However, without more evidence, the exact purpose of Carnotaurus's horns remains a mystery. However, what's not a mystery is that Carnotaurus was a carnivore. No surprises there. Its teeth were sharp and its body was built for the hunt. But here's where the scientists start to throw around ideas. What size and type of prey did Carnotaurus go for? Some think it went big, like really big, maybe even taking on juvenile and adult sauropods. On the flip side, there's another group suggesting Carnotaurus stuck to smaller snacks, using its agility to catch them. But as discussed earlier, Carnotaurus had a somewhat weak bite compared to its big theropod buddies. So, instead of going in for the kill with a strong bite, it might have gone for a hit-and-run strategy, wearing down its prey over time. Next, let's talk tactics. Carnotaurus obviously wasn't about wrestling matches with its reduced forelimbs. It preferred to use its bite and head as battering rams, and boy was it quick. With its slim hind legs and beefy tail muscles, it was practically a speed demon. Plus, its brain structure hints at a sharp sense of smell, making it a pro at sneaky ambushes. But the craziest thing is, Carnotaurus wasn't too big on using its eyes. Instead, it relied less on sight and focused more on low-frequency sounds to sniff out its next meal from afar. Yeah, you don't want to make any sounds around this guy. Finally, the mystery of how Carnotaurus met its end still confuses many scientists, but the popular belief is that it bit the dust around the same time as other non-flying dinosaurs in South America. It first evolved around 72 million years ago, during the late Cretaceous period. At that time, the world had a fairly warm climate with high sea levels. However, Earth's climate cooled down and sea levels dropped later in the Cretaceous. And as the climate changed, Carnotaurus went extinct close to 69 million years ago. 
In the end, Carnotaurus was a hell of a dinosaur with insanely strong legs that made it stand out as the fastest large theropod to ever exist. Do you think it could outrun Usain Bolt in a race? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoy learning about ancient creatures, make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more cool stuff about the past.